It's a beautiful day in this neighborhood, a beautiful day for a neighbor. Would you be mine? Could you be mine? It's a neighborly day in this beauty wood, a neighborly day for beauty. Would you be mine? Could you be mine? I have always wanted to have a view just like you. I've always wanted to make some videos for someone just like you. So, let's make the most of this beautiful day. Since you found this video, you might as well stay. Would you be mine? Could you be mine? Won't you be mine? Subscribe here. Won't you please? Won't you please? Please, won't you be my subscriber? Oh, hello subscribers. Spoiler alert, I'm pretty old. I know, that's shocking, right? But there's one thing that I and all of you young folk have in common. We both grew up watching Mr. Rogers. That's because his make-believe show on PBS aired for 33 years from 1968 to 2001, which targeted difficult topics for children in approachable ways. Whether or not you grew up with him, here are some facts about the late Fred Rogers and why he's just so lovable. Number 10. He loved photo albums. People love to point out that he was particularly hard to interview, often showing more interest in his interviewer than in sharing his personal experiences. He gave interviewers photo albums of the time they'd spent together. According to an Esquire writer, he carried a black camera and would take photos of his interviewer and have photos of the whole endeavor, then giving them an actual photo album. If that's not the most adorable fact you've ever heard about anyone, I don't know what is. Number nine, he had health quirks. Fred, can I call him Fred? Okay, Mr. Rogers. Mr. Rogers had a few health quirks. For one, he was green-red colorblind, but I don't think that affected his life too much. He was also a vegetarian for the majority of his life, stating famously that he didn't want to eat anything that had a mom. If you ask me, broccoli has feelings and moms too, but whatever. He actually became a co-owner of the Vegetarian Times in the 1980s. He was very loving of animals and clearly people, but he didn't like when people wore animals especially. He was not shy about his disliking of furs. He was very conscious about his health, having never smoked or drank, swam a mile every day, yet he still died from cancer. According to his wife, Fred had a lot of health problems as a child, even coming down with scarlet fever, which caused a lifetime dislike of doctors that most likely attributed to a slower diagnosis of the stomach cancer that killed him. Number eight, his military myths. Many people love to say and spread the fact that he was a sniper in the Vietnam War and had a lot of military tattoos up and down his arms, which is why he liked to wear sweaters. Though we'd all like to think the sweet Mr. Rogers had a Rambo-like past, it is not the case at all. Though Mr. Rogers' Neighborhood started airing in 1968, he had been on Mr. Rogers on Canada's CBC network long before that. All the while, he was a minister at an actual church. So he really did skip the whole war thing because he was a little busy. The rumor started not long after the Vietnam War ended, and it wasn't until the internet became public that the truth about him never being enlisted came to full light. Number seven, he did it all. Mr. Rogers was not only a TV personality, but he was, as we said, an ordained minister, a musician, a puppeteer, a writer, a producer, and also a piano prodigy, having started playing at the ripe age of five. He had so many talents, and he even stopped doing children's television to devote himself to adults for a few years, but not long after that, he was right back with the kids, where he felt at home with his purpose. Still, that didn't keep him from preaching the word of God at his church as a minister for people who would later that day catch him on TV. What does your minister do during the week? Number six, he weighed 143 pounds for 30 years. 
According to many sources, he realized one day that he weighed 143 pounds and fell in love with that number. Why? To him, that number was the epitome of love. One for I, four for love, and three for you. His weight was very important to him his whole life because as a child, he was overweight, had asthma, and was often bullied for his weight. Other kids that dared to call little Mr. Rogers Fat Freddy, I bet regretted it later in life. This is likely why he became so creative, often creating little worlds in his childhood bedroom with stuffed animals and a ventriloquist dummy. Perhaps a little creepy, but also very creative. Number five, he testified in court more than once. Mr. Rogers was a credible witness for several cases that went to court. One was in the Supreme Court after VCRs started providing the ability for people to record television. Networks said this was problematic, but Mr. Rogers said he had no problem with people recording his show, which was a testimony that in part led to the practice becoming fair use. In 1969, when then-President Richard Nixon wanted to cut funding for public television, Rogers appeared before the Senate, talking about his show on PBS and how important it was to kids, trying to maintain public funding for the platform. He explained what he did on Mr. Rogers' Neighborhood, and his words moved senators so much that they approved the funding, with the words that made the whole room laugh. Looks like you just earned the $20 million. I think it's wonderful. I think it's wonderful. <sighs> Looks like you just earned the $20 million. <laughs> <laughs> Number four, he gave local talent a chance. Michael Keaton and many media talents from Pittsburgh worked on the Mr. Rogers crew to get their start in the industry. He gave George A. Romero, creator of Night of the Living Dead and Dawn of the Dead, a chance to get camera experience on his show. That's not all, though. He then watched his movies and was said to have loved them. Who knew? You can be a backer of the arts, a lover of children and animals, and also really like zombie films. Number three, received countless awards. Mr. Rogers inspired so many people that, by the time of his death, he had been given over 40 honorary degrees and several awards, including the Presidential Medal of Freedom given to him by George W. Bush in 2002, a year before his death. He also received a Lifetime Achievement Emmy in 1997 and was inducted into the TV Hall of Fame in 1999 won five Daytime Emmy Awards, a Peabody Award, and even a star on the Hollywood Walk of Fame. He helped so many families and children, comforting them and educating them on their psychological health and coping that he deserved every single one of those awards and more. Number two, he has an asteroid named after him. After his death from stomach cancer at age 74, Many fans didn't know how to cope with his loss. Luckily, he had some fans in the industry, the space industry, that thought it'd be a great idea to honor him by giving an asteroid his name. Asteroid 26858 Mr. Rogers was discovered on March 21, 1993, and says the following on its online description. Fred McFeely Rogers, 1928 to 2003, was a passionate advocate for children who taught that everyone is unique and deserving of love and respect just the way you are. For more than 30 years, he used his public television program, Mr. Rogers' Neighborhood, as a vehicle of service to the youngest members of the human family. So in a small way, Mr. Rogers continues to float by us at all times. Number one, more fun facts. As we sadly close this heartwarming list, we have a few more random facts about the late, great Mr. Rogers. During his very long career, he made sure to answer every piece of mail sent to him, 
Sure, after he got quite busy, he had some help, hiring staff member and producer Hedda Sherapan, but he would read, edit, and sign every single one. It was the minister in him, some say, that saw this as a pastoral duty. A few people have tried to find people who had sent unanswered mail to Mr. Rogers, but to no avail. He answered every single one. Just another reason we can't figure out where in his chest he could fit such a big heart. Finally, for those who may have seen A Beautiful Day in the Neighborhood, the biopic starring Tom Hanks, may have remembered the ending scene on the subway where strangers flash mobbed him, beautifully singing his theme song. I know what you're thinking. It's all Hollywood, right? Wrong. The event actually took place. The key difference between the movie and real life is that in the former, it's adults doing the singing, while in the latter, it was school children. Thanks for watching. What are your memories of Mr. Rogers? Tell us about them in the comments. Be sure to regularly visit the Top 10 Archive neighborhood every time we upload a new video by subscribing and clicking the bell. Oh yes, and please give this video a like and share it with all of your special friends and neighbors.